Hello my schoolers, you are welcome back to my school channel and my name is Adiola. Remember in this channel you will be joining me to solve a jam simple pass question for this subject in the year 2014. Remember do not go anywhere, stay with us and we will be right back. In this video segment, we are solving questions 1 to 14. So let's begin with question 1. What is the least possible error encountered when taking measurements with a meter rule? Okay, so when you talk about a meter rule or talking about um, error generally or the estimated uncertainty, you are talking about the half of the smallest possible value. So um, using a meter rule, you know, we have this, the smallest uh, measurement or the smallest value is 0.1 centimeter or one millimeter so what we are dealing with here is a millimeter so the estimated uncertainty will be half of one millimeter okay so half of that is 0.5 millimeter so the correct option here is option c 0.5 millimeter number two a quantity which requires a magnitude and direction to be specified is what? So when you talk about magnitude and direction, you're talking about a vector quantity. So you have to at first identify the vector quantity here, or the vector quantities, or the scalar quantities, or the scalar quantity. So um, at first, which of these options provided is a vector quantity? That is displacement. Is distance traveled in a particular direction? So temperature, distance, mass, they have all scalar quantities. This is the only vector quantity. Magnitude and direction. So the correct option here is option C for displacement. Question three: Electric potential torque, kinetic energy, momentum. Which of the quantities listed are vectors? So you have to sort out the vector quantities and the scalar quantities. So when you talk about scalar quantities, we are talking about electric potential, we are talking about um, kinetic energy, we are talking about length, we are talking about mass, we are talking about distance, volume, and what have you. But when you talk about vector quantities, we are looking at torque, we are looking at momentum, because when you take, check out the definition and the concepts of these two, momentum and torque, they are of course, vector quantities. Other examples of um, vector quantities talk about force. Okay, so just to put it simply, the correct options, which quantities are vectors, they are torque and momentum. So that is II and IV. So where do we find II and IV? That is option A. So option A is the correct option. Kindly click on that link in the description below. It's going to take you to the My School website. Okay, so on the website you can get the My School mobile app or the My School software. So nothing hinders you from getting this tool so that you can better prepare for your coming exam. So join me as to solve question four: Which type of motion do the wheels of a moving car undergo? All right. So it's possible for a body to undergo two types of motion so in this particular case example of um, the combination of translational motion and um, rotational motion is um, when you see this uh, ping pong that table tennis uh, ball right moving from one player to the other you see a diver plunging into the pool all right and of course this um, same concept that we have here so the correct option here is for rotational and translational motion so the correct option is option d do not forget to hit the like button, also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video clips. Number 5. A car accelerates uniformly from rest at 3 meters per second square. Its velocity after traveling a distance of 24 meters is what? So take note of this. A car accelerates uniformly from rest. That tells you uniform velocity is zero. And look at the unit here, meter per second squared. So this is the acceleration that we are looking out for. So we can use one of the equations of motion. And what can we use based on the parameters given? We are going to use v square equals u square plus 2ax. Right? So we have, we are asked to look for this velocity, uniform, 
all right from rest that is zero square right plus two times okay from acceleration which is three times the distance covered that is 24 so we have v square equal zero square is zero times zero and that's still zero added up to this two times this, this is six all right or if you can make it simply three times 24 that is 72 72 times two that is 144 you may like to go through the long multiplication method, but let's just save time in this clip so we have 144. We are asked to look for v, not v square. So I'm going to square root both sides to eliminate square. So I have this. So v equals square root of 144 is 12. All right, meter per second velocity. So let's go back to the screen to see if we can find any of the options that carry the value 12 meter per second. So join me as we scan through. Where do you find it? Option A. So option A is the correct option. Question 6. Calculate the escape velocity of a satellite launched from the Earth's surface if the radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to power 6 meters. So when you talk about escape velocity, that is the minimum velocity okay, that an object needs to possess for it to escape or leave the um, gravitational influence or field of a particular astronomical body, for example, the Earth. So basically, um, this, the formula is square root of 2 gr, acceleration due to gravity, that's the g, the r is the radius of the Earth, which is given as this value. So that is 2 times 9.8 or 2 times 10 times this. When you get your answer, you find the square root. So basically, that should give you roughly 11 kilometer per second. So the escape velocity that any objects require Satellites now in this context, that's 11 kilometer per second. So it should possess something greater than this to escape this gravitational influence. So the correct option here, closest to what we should have, according to what we are given, the correct option is option D, 11.3 kilometer per second. Number seven, an object of weight, 8 kg on Earth, is taken to a planet where acceleration due to gravity is one third of its value on Earth. Okay, so the weight of the object on the planet is what? So, um, remember that weight differs from mass, okay? Mass is the quantity of matter a body contains, okay? The stuff that uh, it is made of. So, talking about weight, we are talking about the gravitational effect. So, weight is mass times gravity. Right? And we are told that acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 10. So let me do something like this, giving data. All right. So acceleration due to gravity on Earth, like I said, is 10, right? But we are told that here it is going to be given as one third. One third of 10. That is 10 over 3, right? So, we are asked to find the weight, what it weighs on that planet. If it is, from the question we are told, an, an object of weight 8 kg on Earth. So, on Earth it is 8, right, times 10 over 3. So, that should be 8 times 10, that is 80 over 3, that is roughly 26.6666. So, I can have it as 27 Newton. So that's what it weighs in the other planet. So let's go back to the screen and see if we can find the value 27 Newton in any of the options provided. So let's go through the question again. We can find that in option C. Going through the question again, an object of weight 8 kg on Earth is taken to a planet where acceleration due to gravity is one third of its value on Earth. The weight of the object on the planet is what? It is now 27 Newton. So 27 Newton is the correct option, option C. Question 8. One of the conditions necessary for an object to be in equilibrium when acted upon by a number of parallel forces is that the vector sum of the forces in any given direction is zero. Okay, you can find this answer precisely the topic equilibrium of forces. So once you are familiar with this topic, you will see that this concept is plainly um, dished out. So the correct option once again is option B for zero. Question 9. What happens when three coplanar and non-parallel forces are in equilibrium? So we can have parallel and non-parallel. So in this case, there are three things that um, we should just take note of. Um, these forces, these three forces, okay, must act in a plane. Their lines of action, okay, must intersect 
at a common point. This is what we have. And also you can bring these vectors of these three forces and they can form a closed triangle and all of that. So the correct option here is option D. Their lines of action must meet at a point or they should intersect at a common point. So option D is the correct option. Do not forget to use that link available. All right, click on it. You are going to move to the My School website. There you meet with our solution providers who are willing and ready to help you out. So why not ask those questions right now by using that link? So join me as we solve question 10. An object of mass 20 kg is released from a height of 10 meters above the ground level. The kinetic energy of the object just before it hits the ground is what? Okay, so you should know that um, potential energy in this uh, situation that we have is being converted into kinetic energy. And remember, total energy equals PE, potential energy plus kinetic energy, equals MGH, mass times gravity times height. I can decide to use that formula, can okay, and decide to move another way, all right? So, uh, remember, if we say K equals half mv square, right? We don't have V yet provided, so we can use this first. Remember, there are different approaches to solving this question. So, we have um, V square equals, let's go back to the question we have on um, U square. Um, an object of mass 20 kg is released from a height of 10 meters. So, that is position of rest, right? So, the height is 10. Okay, so let's see from the question. An object of mass 20 kg is released from a height of 10 meters above the ground. So, remember that this is also 10 acceleration due to gravity. So, that will be V square equals 0 square is 0 times 0, that is 0, so that is gone. 2 times 10, that is 20. 20 times 10, that is 200. So, we know V square equals 200. So, if you slot this in back into this equation, so we have K equals half of our mass is given as 20 over 1 times V square is gotten as 200 right so if i do this this is 10 so k equals 10 times is as 2000 joules like i said i can still decide to say mgh if you multiply through you should have the same answer so let's go back to the screen and see if we can have this same um, value we've derived from our solution platform so look through the options provided where do we find 2000 joules as an option c so option c is the correct option it's possible that you have better explanations or steps you would like to share. Please, we are so much interested. All you need to do, use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations or contributions you'd like to recommend. Question 11. The energy in the nucleus of an atom, of atoms rather, produce heat, which can be used to generate what? Generate electrical energy. Remember, um, the, the energy stored in the nucleus of atom of an atom okay um, such energy you can refer to it as nuclear energy and you can recall nuclear power plants all right so they convert this energy given out in form of heat okay to this to electrical energy okay and this source of energy or this kind of energy accounts for about 14 percent of world electrical energy supply so the most viable option here is option C for electrical energy. Number 12. A machine whose efficiency is 75% is used to lift a load of 1000 Newton. Calculate the effort put into the machine if it has a velocity ratio of 4. Okay, so uh, we can tell the efficiency equals MA over VR times 100%. So let's do this given data. Right, so we're given efficiency as 75%. All right, so we are given, remember mechanical advantage equals load over effort, that is 1000 over E for effort, okay? So, um, we're given our velocity ratio as four. So recall the formula for efficiency equals MA divided by VR or MA over VR, okay? Or MA times one over VR, whichever one, times 100%. So we'll have efficiency, 75 equals MA, which is 1,000 over effort, right? Times one over VR. That's divided by its coming under, which is four times 
100. Okay, so I can have 4 year 1, 4 year 25. So when I cross multiply, I will have E times 75 equals 1000 times 25. Dividing both sides by 75. So I have 25 year 1, 25 year 3. 3 over 1000, that should give us 333.3333. What have you? So let's go back to the board to see if we can find something like this 333.33 thereabouts. So join me as we scan through the options together. You will find this correct option in option C. So option C is the correct option. Number 13. A wheel and axle is used to raise a load whose width is 800 Newton when an effort of 250 Newton is applied. If the radii of the wheel and axle are 800 millimeters and 200 millimeters respectively, the efficiency of the machine is what? So before we talk about efficiency, we have to sort out the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio. So we are giving VR, member for wheel and axle, we are looking at of the wheel over the axle, radius of the wheel over radius of the axle, that's R over R. So for the wheel is 800, axle is, um, we have 200, okay, from the question. You can see if the radii of the wheel and the house are 800 and 200 respectively, so this gives us four. So VR is gotten as four. So let's find the mechanical advantage. Remember, it is load over effort. So we are told that there is a load of 800 Newton over effort of 250 Newton that is applied, okay? So we have this. All right, so 25 in this, okay, um, that should roughly give us um, 25 in 80, that is three times, remaining five, okay? Five over 25, five year one, five year five, that's 0 0.2. So roughly I have 3.2. So remember efficiency equals MA over VR times 100 over one, right? So MA is gotten as 3.2, over VR, which we have as 4, right, times 100. So I can say 2 year 2, 2 year 1.6, 2 year 1, right, 2 year 50, okay? So 50 times this should give us 80. All right, so the efficiency is 80%. So join me as we go back to the screen to secure the correct option. So. Let's see if we can find 80% from the options provided. Look through the options and you will find 80% in option B. So option B is a super correct option. 14, a force of 500 Newton is applied to a steel wire of cross-sectional area is 0.2 meters square. The tensile stress is what? So we can take tensile stress as force over cross-sectional area. So that is tensile stress, okay. Right, equals the force over cross sectional area. Okay, so we are given the force as 500 newtons over cross sectional area 0 0.2. So remember or recall that 0 0.2, this is 500 divided by 0 0.2 is 1 over 5. Right, so that is 500 over 1 times 5 over 1. So 5 times 500, that is 2000. 500. So we can decide to convert this or bring this to standard form. So that would just be 2.5 times 10 raised to power. This is 1, 2, 3. Okay, 2.5 times 10 raised to power, 3 Newton meters square. So let's go back to the screen and see if we can find the correct option. 2.5 times 10 raised to power 3. Where do we have that? We have that in option D. Please be very careful of the standard value being put out. So this is the correct option. Option D is the correct option. Right there, we've come to the end of this video clip, but there are more video segments to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button. Also push on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video clip on for you.